my, my. Rats, rats in the pantry. If you wish to dine with us, little ones, you need but pass. <laughs> Hello everybody and welcome back to the show. This is the internet's least favourite channel when it comes to all things AOS and we are proud of it here. We like being the red-headed stepchild. And before I carry on driving away our uh, audience, it's the weekend show. Um, on the weekend I normally break down the pre-orders for uh, for the week but because there was so much going on this week I've decided to change it up a little bit so this is going to be like a part one and it's going to co just concentrate on everything that was dropped for Flesh Eater Courts and then part two will be everything that is Skaven orientated so it's not so much going to like break down for prices it's just going to be what we're going to see within the Carrion Empires, what we're going to see within the Tomes and the Endless Spells. So, if you're still with me after my intro, thank you very much and we're going to get on with the show. Right then guys, first up we have got Carrion Empires. Only a little bit about this was known before because they didn't really build it up like they did Wrath and Rapture but we got to see the art we got to see what's in the box and I broke this down previously in a video so I'm not gonna go over it again but it I believe it worked out that you were if you bought it for the flesh eater courts you were basically getting scave and free always a bonus but now it's uh, pre-order week, and what else do we know about this uh, pack? Well, we know it's going to be £95. We know that there's two models in the, in this uh, box. It's the Flesh Eater Court Arc Regent, and he seems a, a lovely little support character. And we've also got the Skaven Warp Bombardier, which sounds like a... Grace here that probably ate so much um, warp dust that he's licking windows half the time. But I will cover these later on, and for the Skaven half, I will cover that in another video. But like I said, we got two new models. We've also got um, war scrolls and markers that are coming in the box. So you're not going to be like and knowing about the rules and everything is there it's perfect for people that are AOS curious because there's also going to be included the core rule book so if you want a, a start set but you're not interested in the Stormcast Eternals or you're not interested in Night Taunts this is another box just like Wrath and Rapture which is fantastic to get you in the RB. It's not you've got to buy that box and another core rule book. All the core rules are going to be in this box as well. So it's just it's fantastic deal I feel. So I can't sing the praises of this box enough. If we've got more variety, why is that such a bad thing? Because you know, you're more likely to get other people into the RB because like Nobody wants to like start off and they're gonna pick an army they don't like. That's that's a doubt, that's an uphill battle really, you know. You, you, nobody's gonna be interested. So if somebody's interested in maniac cannibals or in weird rats, this is the box for them. And I give him a mention to earlier. This is the abhorrent art regent. As you can see on the screen, it's a fantastic model. It's very crypt horror esque, which is always a good thing. So I think they are fantastic models, and he's very flesh eater glorious. I will say, if you're not um, familiar with the background, 
the flesh eater court is a very dark i would say dark law for aos because these are undead creatures that the cannibals they basically didn't any old shit off the floor as well as each other but they think they're royalty they think that they are these knights that are going questing it's a slobbering gibberish monsters which is fantastic but grim and dark and macabre at the same time and i feel that this hq is every bit of that so i haven't got any war scroll information on him yet but i think he will appear in the legends on a lunchtime series pretty soon when i do but from what we know about him thanks to the warhammer community is that his role is a support hq he's going to be quite handsy in a in a fight if he's being attacked but his role mostly is support he's going to have command abilities plus spells and we got a little glimpse at one of them which i will put up on the screen now right ferocious hunger is this going to be a spell it's got a casting value of six and it's going to affect units wholly within 24 inches and what's good about this is it increases the attack by d3 so depending on your circumstances if you've got a mass of say ghouls in front of you and you really need to take out a unit or you know this is going to be one of those units that's going to hit hard going coming back and you is possibly is going to wipe out the unit you can use this to you know up the ante a bit and probably swing it you away so as i got for an example we did ghouls they got a normal attack of two if you're lucky enough to say roll a five or a six you're adding three so each model in that group has got five attacks that's going to be amazing i don't need to say anything else for that one that's basically that's just a whirling mass of claws coming at you that's and yeah most of them are going to hit most of them are going to wound so it's definitely going to uh, do damage to the opponent which is going to be just amazing to be honest i can't i can't stress that enough I haven't got the other noted uh, command ability here, which was Summon Imperial Guard, which is kind of funny because when I saw this, I thought it was a typo because I thought it was something to do with 40k, and then, but I forgot that the law says about they see themselves as, you know, knights and regents and kings of their lands, so with this ability they can summon either crypt flayers or horrors or ghouls so you can cater this to your circumstances whether you need nice beefy units to be summoned or if you need a mob to try and take a punch to get out the way this is, this is a really good command ability so I think um, the Flesh Eater Court have had a really good buff since the since the uh, first uh, first uh, book. Sorry, I've, uh, I'm in need of a cup of tea at the moment. Right, I'm back. Um, got my cup of tea with me. Feeling more myself. Oh, well, that's good brew. Right. What can I say? Um, we know that the Flesh Eater Court needed to be boosted from the first iteration, to be honest, because it's been a lot going on. As I've said previously, we've got um, endless spells now. We've got um, all the stuff that came with Soul Wars. We've had new iterations of rules. So 
this week is they've released it released the new tome to go with the army now. So new starters can pick up the tome and the box set. It's gonna be an amazing price. And it's everything that you need for uh, Age of Sigma 2.0 for your flesh eater coats. So, what do we know that's in the tome at the moment? Well, we know that what they've done is they've taken the information from the uh, previous books and the General's Handbook and expanded upon them to make them a bit better, a bit more user friendly. So, not only do we keep the delusions that we had in the first book, we also get the Grand Court. So these rules now will make it easier to like build your army and spread out the rules. So it's going to be fantastic, guys. If you like crazy carnivals, this is the army for you. And it's it's very versatile I will say so don't take my word for it if you're interested pick up the book it's going to be out in a week's time Warmer community has got a lot of articles got covering the flesh eater court check it out um, there's probably other channels now that's got their hands on the tome so they can tell you more information but let's have a look at one of the command abilities and the one I've got in front of me is probably known by every Flesh Eater Court player is Feeding Frenzy. This was a, I believe it was a general rule uh, for Flesh Eater Courts previously, but now it's become a command ability which makes it more versatile because you can choose when you need to use this. But for you that don't know the ability, the ability is. Um, you pick a unit that's been uh, that's wiped out another unit. You in the uh, combat phase. You then use your command ability, bump, and then they can charge again and attack. Absolutely fantastic. It has the potential to swarm any grouped up unit. So. It's going to be an amazing army to fight against, so what can I say? But, um, before I carry on, I just wanted to go back and talk about something else that's in the tome that I briefly mentioned, which was the Grand Court, which is going to be a mechanic that you can build your army around, and that's going to just give extra buffs to your, to your army, so if you dedicate it to, say, I know, Gur or Ash, Ashi is going to change the army. Um, from the one that they, they've told us about, my favourite was the Grizzle, the Grizzle Gore Court, which, a bit of a tongue twister, but these guys believe that they're all knights and they're all champions of their lands. And because they want to like ride their majestic steeds, They've given you the ability to pick zombie dragons and royal drag zombie dragons as battle line troops. So you, it's just a fantastic way of changing around the army. So you don't have to have ghouls everywhere. You don't have to have, have small monsters. You can go for the big boys. You can have, you can have a monster party if you wanted, and it's going to be amazing to see just like how people will come up with this because you there's no two playstyles the same and it's this is if you want to be unique and you you don't want to have skeletons everywhere this is the army for you so it's just fantastic right guys i know battles home is complete without spells what do we know fleshy to court they like these spells Gives them nice little buffs. So, these these spells are from the Law of Madness, which is very fitting considering they're all lost in their own little madness, madness believing that they are just amazing people, but really they're just, I don't know, worse than shit on your shoe. 
So, lower madness. I've got an example up. It's called Blood Feast. Casting value of 7. You pick an enemy within 12 inches. Yeah, and you pick a friendly unit within 6 inches. And you roll D3. That D3 is going to be mortal wounds that you transfer from the enemy unit to the friendly unit. Best thing about this as well now is that if you roll, say, 10 or more, as per everything that is normally within the realms of death, it gets a little boost. So, instead of rolling D3, you get D6 mortal wounds, which is an amazing buff. You're not going to rely on it all the time, but if you get it, it's a little fantastic little treat. So, let's hope every other rule is exactly the same as that. But it's not just about command abilities. It's not just about law. We need traits. And what do we know about the traits? So far, there's going to be different traits for for your on-foot heroes and your mounted heroes. Possibly, there's going to be different ones for regents and arch regents. As I haven't got my hands on the book, I can't tell you exactly. But they've split it to a point where... You can just customise every inch of your grand court, which is fantastic. Because if you want to get down to the nitty gritty, if you if you've got a narrative in your head and you want to like expand that throughout the army, so you're not just going, here's my battle line, here's my uh, here's my archers, here's this, here's that. You got every facet of that army has got a story, and that's just amazing. This it's, I, I don't perhaps it's me perhaps it's the fact that I, I love the little stories that come out of the out of the books I like I read the battle tomes not just for the rules I read it for like the backgrounds because it's just some amazing snippets in there that just makes you want more so what can I say right guys we're gonna start wrapping this video up soon but before we go we've got to talk about endless spells and scenery for your army, for your flesh eater courts. So, I've got a picture of all three of them. They look amazing, the models themselves. It's just grotesque and fantastic all in one. So, if this is your bag, enjoy. And as a side note, I don't know whether anybody knows this, but if you've got Nagash, being the Supreme Lord of the Undead, he's also got access to these Endless Spells. So, it just makes him even beefier. So, well, what can I say? I know what I can say. I'm going to, I'm going to give you little snippets of uh, the Endless Spells. So, first off, we've got the... The, the Cadaverous Barricade. Tongue Twisters. Casting value of 5. Basically, with, you can set this up and it's just going to create line of sight blocking terrain. It's going to give you cover. It's fantastic. It's going to slow down the enemy. So, what's good about that? If they are within three inches of the barricade, because of the grasped hands rule, half their movement. So, you may not be wood elves, but you've dictated movement. Don't need trees. You just need zombie fences which I think sounds better but that's just me and we've got the corpse may stampede casting value of seven so once once this model has been deployed and moved you roll five dice for each unit passed over so if this moved over say three units that's 15 dice if the dice is higher than their wounds, so say you rolled a 4 and their wounds are 2, they get one mortal wound per dice over the wounds characteristic, which is fantastic. That's, you know, is whittling down before they even get to the army. But in addition, because it's not a realm of death law unless it's just got a big massive bonus, on a 6, it's D3 mortal wounds. So, you're not going to get it every time. 
some games you might not see it but when you do it's going to be fantastic so i'm not complaining to be honest i think it's that endless spell is tempting me to pick up nagash just saying and to end the end of spells we've got the chalice which if you are the legions of nagash player you're probably familiar with the rules as they work but it's casting value of six on a four plus uh, for each model slain so you got a little bit of bookkeeping by her you can either heal a unit or you can raise models to a unit which is pretty fantastic it's like having the zombies and skeletons from legions and the gas but you put them to use for your ghouls so it's it's win-win basically you've got the best of both worlds i know it's an end of spell and it's not a legion trait but you can't have it all i'm sorry you you, you can't have zombie dragons and then have these type of ender spells it's just not possible and guys we're gonna wrap up this video by talking about a bit of scenery because it's not a gw release without scenery to go with it and i'm not saying that that's a bad thing it just seems to be the norm at the moment everyone's got an endless spell and they've got scenery so here we go we've got the charnel throne which to be honest when i first saw this i thought how can you work this into like a narrative just like this throne appearing but better the men than me will sort that out and you might be in a gaming group which don't really care about it so it's not for me to say but what i can tell you is that this throne when it's on the battlefield it's an inspiring piece of scenery for uh, flesh eaters and it's sinister for the opponent so it's that set buff a negative which is good if you want to stick it in the middle of the board because you know that it's going to add to your army if you push forward but on top of that i wanted to mention just this fact which means this should be on the board every time that you field your army it's the fact that if you've got a arch regent on the board and it's within one inch of this model this bit of scenery if you in the rule i said about summoning your imperial guard well you could choose to do that but you don't lose any command points you're saving that for another thing so let me say that again you're using your command abilities without no command points you're not losing the points there's there's not a negative there so that's just fantastic that's that's you guaranteeing that you were just going to save that and buff something else up so you could summon a unit of ghouls charge them out if they wipe out a unit you can use that command point that you just saved send send them into another unit the buff that this thing gives is amazing so i expect to see this sold out because of how beneficial this is for the flesh eater course players but i might be wrong i might be just a little bit you know starry eyed at there what do you think of the release this week are you interested in any of this are you not interested did you like the way i done it did you not perhaps you didn't even make it to this point of the video and perhaps i'm just talking to myself right then guys that's the end of the video i know it's been a di bit different this week but i just wanted to try something different rather than just read out prices and what's in the box i wanted to show you uh what this can do for the army but you know it's a battle tome so i can't really tell you a lot until you pick up the book all i can tell you is the models for fleshy to course are fantastic but that's enough now because it's the end of the video this is the the shill time i call it i don't know what anybody else calls it but i want to say thank you for watching the video and if you've watched any other videos i want to say thank you for watching our video as well 
if you're not a subscriber please subscribe to the channel it would mean so much because that just means there's people listening um if you did like the video comment and give us a thumbs up if you didn't like the video still comment and just tell us why you didn't like it so i could change it up in future i've got the skaven part come out soon as well so i will be going over that and yeah it's going to be a bit of a change around this week but one thing hasn't changed we have got a teespring store so if you want your own little painting gear you want to get your noob on head over to teesprings pick yourself up some uh, some t-shirts you could even pick yourself up a hoodie and because it's me it's very important there's even a tea is a cup for your tea and for your coffee or if you're a heathen you want to use it as a water pot personally that's just heresy to me a cup is for your tea end of sports but on top of that we have got patreon we have got paypal i try i try and say that it's in, like it'll do well wonders for the channel sorry i'm uh, tripping on my words now but just watching the videos and liking the videos and sharing them with your friends it's going to mean so much to us if you have got some spare money and you want you want to share share with us that would be fantastic because it will go straight back into the channel so we can give you a better experience but then if we give you a better experience i might have to change the tagline of the intimate internet most hated youtube channel for aos so it's down to you guys what do you want to do what do you want to do but i'm not going to force you to do anything but just for watching the video i want to say thank you very much and i will see you again